hi today we will understand the postgres sql architecture i have used the very basic uh, memory architecture of postgres sql so that you will not confuse and uh, if you are already uh, oracle dba so it will be very easy for you to understand the postgres sql architecture and i will explain in the same way so that you will be getting all the details uh, easily so in postgres sql we have shared memory area in which we have wall buffers shared buffers if you remember in oracle we have database data buffer cache and redo buffer cache just like wall buffer we have in postgres and shared buffer in postgres sql then we have some processes like client process backend processes writer and check pointer processes wall writer auto vacuum launchers auto vacuum worker processes we have wall files in oracle we call them uh, redo log files in uh, oracle we have lgwr in postgres sql we have wall writer so this is the basic architecture of postgres sql next we will differentiate oracle and postgres sql so just like oracle postgres sql is also a rdmms software but with some different naming methods and that are easy to understand if you are already oracle dba in oracle we have tables in postgres sql we call them relations in oracle we have columns in postgres sql we call them attributes in oracle records are known as rows in postgres sql we call them tuples in oracle data is stored in blocks in postgres sql it is stored in pages that means page is the smallest unit of data in postgres sql where is an oracle we have block in oracle we call table or index fragmentation in postgres we call it table or index bloating in oracle we can commit or roll back any transaction in postgres sql every transaction is by default auto committed but we can turn it off but it is not recommended as per postgres sql documentation for better performance in oracle we have default port 1521 in postgres sql it is 5432 in oracle for remote connections we have listener process in postgres sql we have postmaster process but as comparison to oracle postmaster process have some other tasks also and we will see that in uh, further in details so let's come to shared memory area so shared memory area have mainly uh, two parts the first one is shared buffer and then wall buffer wall is nothing but right ahead log shared buffer is the memory area from or to io operations takes place between server and the client it holds frequently accessed data just like in oracle we have database buffer cache when ever any client request any data it return via shared buffer if it is already present there else the requested data will be first loaded into shared buffer from the data files which are available on the uh, mount points or file system then it will be returned to client process so by this way it helps to achieve better io less contentions quick response from the database if data is already available in the shared buffer wall buffer is the memory area where actual data change or modification takes place 
it temporarily stores the changed records and wall writer process flushes them to wall files which is present on the disk wall files can further achieved sorry archived by the archiver process to archived wall files archived wall files can be used in future for recovery purposes wall writer writes from buffer to wall files when wall buffer failed after any transaction completion wall buffer size is defined by the wall underscore buffer parameter in the configuration file uh, just like oracle we have the server parameter file or init file in postgre we have the conf file that is configuration file writer and check pointer process writer writes the dirty buffers data to data files and check pointer maintains the checkpoint details in wall files every checkpoint denotes the point of consistency in the database data files auto vacuum launcher so it is the launcher process which starts automatically and it is controlled by some auto vacuum parameters which we will see in next lectures of postgresql auto vacuum workers these are the worker process which is spawned by the auto vacuum launcher what it does it reclaims the free space from the tables or indexes for reuse postmaster process it is the main process which starts in the beginning and then it starts other database processes it is the master process it manage other processes it starts and stop processes as per the need in case other process is terminated by any reasons post master process starts them but if post master is killed by any way then we need to start the post master or database instance manually it will not auto start what it uh, does more than uh, these so it validates the incoming client connection and post successful validation it creates a separate backend process in database server to serve the client process requests so this is the architecture of postgresql and i think this is little bit boring to you so let's do some practical i have a vm running on my system i have installed on linux so let's connect to the server okay now we can check the process i can grab the postgre so it will sh show all the process so you can see here the post master process and all the different process here like the logger check pointer background writer wall writer auto vacuum launcher so these are the processes which are running here archiver is not running because my db is in not in archive mode just like oracle and uh, in oracle we log in using sql plus in postgresql we have p sql so like this we can log in into database and we can like check our version select version so this is the database version running on the system and quit from this you just mention backslash then q then enter so you will exit the pc equal now if i show you let's say i am manually terminating any process i am killing this logger process just observe the timing i have killed let's see again 
logger you see a new process has been started again others are still running but this process has been started again so this has been started by the postmaster process but if i kill the postmaster process this one it will terminate the instance you see there is no post query running if i log in into database it will throw me error so got it so postmaster you can say it is the mandatory background process which cannot be terminated if you kill this process it will eventually terminate the instance so to start we have one command pgctl by other option we can use the system ctl command sorry it, it needs sudo system ctl start postgres equal 10 yeah so it has started the database yes so you can see now my db is running and now i can able to log into database so i hope this video is very very clear to you to understand the postgresql architecture so be in touch in next video we will see some other topics also in postgresql so thank you very much